that BioWare's splash screen was so clean. Welcome friends to my playthrough of Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Now before we begin, please allow me to explain myself in regards to the previous playthrough of Final Fantasy VII Remake. Now it is unfortunate that that playthrough is being put on hold for the moment but I intend to evolve it as a playthrough of Final Fantasy 7 Remake Intergrade for PS5. Now I have yet to manage to buy a PS5 but once I do I have all the intentions to continue that playthrough. And that's it. Today we are here for Mass Effect Legendary Edition. So, let's proceed. User agreement. Next. Privacy policy. Accept. Oh. I like the curvature of the earth that continues throughout the three games. We have the first game here, the second one, and then the third one. Of course, we're gonna begin with the first game of the series. Before we do that, let's check out these options first. Language, English, subtitle, font size, medium, controller vibration on, Gameplay feedback, I think we can leave that on as well. Okay, let's go. The first game of the Mass Effect series. Oh, and I'm wearing a beret in the color of Systems Alliance. <laughs> At least that's the intention. Ooh, Mass Relay. That's what it's called, right? Mass Relay. Here we are, Mass Effect 1. Now, I have beaten this game before, but it was a long time ago. So it's not like I remember everything. But yeah, I just want to say that this is not going to be a blind playthrough. Okay, let's continue. Before we begin, let me check out some options if there are. It's going to be probably down here. Yep, there we go. Graphics. Mm -hmm. Okay, favor quality offers increased resolution at reduced FPS. Favor frame rate adjusts resolution to obtain higher FPS where applicable. Quality and performance will vary depending on your hardware. We are playing on PS4 Pro right now, and I think I'm gonna favor frame rate in the hopes of achieving 60 FPS. Okay, calibration. I think we're good. Yeah. Sound, yep. Everything at maximum. Controls. I think we're good. Gameplay. Combat difficulty. I'm gonna leave that at normal, I think. Disable auto level up. Level scaling. I read a little bit about this before. Let me read the explanation as well. In classic mode, the original 1 to 60 level range will be used instead of the new 1 to 30 level range. XP and talent points progression remains the same, but the number of levels is doubled. So from what I read, I think if we wanna uh, maximize everybody's stats in a single playthrough, we should leave this in legendary mode. Which is what I want, so I'll leave it as such. Squad power usage. Oh. Oh yeah. 
Let's leave it defensive. Subtitles on, definitely. Yep, I think we are good for the options. So let's start a new career. Welcome to Alliance Military Database. Ooh. Classified information requested. Establishing secure connection. Secure connection confirmed. It's all the same voice lines but different graphics. Okay. Profile reconstruction. Due to your covered N7 status, ID records are incomplete. Please confirm identity from the records below or register manually. You have John Shepard, Jane Shepard. Yeah, in the Legendary Edition, she looks like the uh, like the one, the Jane Shepard from Mass Effect Three. And enter new ID. I think for maximum customizability, we should choose enter new ID, right? Yeah, manually enter career info and physical stats into the Normandy crew database. Now, it's not like I'm gonna be like super original or anything, but I'm gonna go with mm, custom mail. Please lock. Oh, the voice got cut out for some reason, and I'm gonna go with John Shepard. Log in to access your profile. Oh, okay. The voice got cut out because of the keyboard pop-up. Yeah, I think I like the name John Shepard. Warning. Data corruption detected. Please reconstruct profile. Confirm pre-service history. Hmm. Okay, so for those of you who have never played this game before, this option and the one after this kinda defines your background and it sometimes may come up in conversation and such. So I have a choice in mind already but let's read one by one. Spacer, both of your parents were in the Alliance military. Your childhood was spent on ships and stations as they transferred from posting to posting never staying in one location for more than a few years. Following in your parents' footsteps, you enlisted at the age of 18. And then colonist. You were born and raised on Mindoar, I think, a small border colony in the Attican Traverse. When you were 16, slavers raided Mindoar, slaughtering your family and friends. You were saved by a passing alliance patrol and you enlisted with the military a few years later. And an earthborn. You were an orphan raised on the streets of the great megatropolises covering earth. You escaped the life of petty crime and underworld gangs by enlisting with the alliance military when you turned 18. So, I like the idea of playing as a commander shepherd that's from Earth because as with most RPGs in the beginning you will be explained a whole bunch of stuff right and I think that makes sense make that makes the most sense if we play as a commander Shepard from Earth now it is unfortunate that we don't have family members anymore I the last time I played this game, I remember I chose the spacer and we have our mother, I think. Our mother? Yeah, I think. Which I always like, actually. I like not being alone as a protagonist, right? Because that's quite common. But I... I wanted to play as a Commander Shepard from Earth more. So I'm just gonna compromise with the uh, orphan origin. So yeah, Earthborn Confirm it is. Confirm psychological profile. Okay, we have three options as well here. Soul Survivor. 
during your service a mission you were on went horribly wrong. Trapped in an extreme survival situation, you had to overcome physical torments and psychological stresses that would have broken most people. You survived while all those around you fell, and now you alone are left to tell the tale. War Hero Early in your military career, you found yourself facing an overwhelming enemy force. You risked your own life to save your fellow soldiers and defeat the enemy despite the impossible odds. Your bravery and heroism have earned you medals and recognition from the Alliance fleet. And Ruthless, throughout your military career, you have held fast to one basic rule. Get the job done. You've been called cold, calculating, and brutal. Your reputation for ruthless efficiency makes your fellow soldiers wary of you. But when failure is not an option, the military always goes to you first. Now, between among these choices, I'm gonna go with War Hero. Because I'm gonna play Space Captain America, basically. <laughs> Space Steve Rogers, and I wanna be more... Well, this game have the term for it, actually. Uh, we have Paragon and we have Renegade. And I'm gonna play more of a Paragon side. The Paragon is kind of more like a goody two shoes. Not necessarily good. And Renegade isn't necessarily evil either. Renegade is more like uh, ruthless, like here. Sometimes you gotta be Renegade. Sometimes you're gonna be Paragon, but. I'm gonna lean towards Paragon. I'm gonna try not to be a machine and automatically choose the Paragon stuff, but most of the time I can see myself doing that. And War Hero goes hand in hand with that playstyle, I think. So that's what we're gonna choose. Confirm military specialization. Now, the class. Let's read it them. One by one too. Actually, no, I think I'll, <laughs> I'll tire you out. But basically, we have three aspects here. Uh, combat, tech, and biotic. Uh, soldier is full combat. Engineer is full tech. Adept is full biotic. I think combat and tech is self-explanatory, but biotic is something unique to Mass Effect. It's basically the force. So you're kind of like a superhero if you choose biotic. And the other three are a combination of the three uh, aspects. So like infiltrator is combat plus tech. Sentinel is biotic plus tech. And then Vanguard is biotic plus combat. And going with the Space Captain America angle, I think I'm gonna play as a soldier. As I mentioned before, this is not very original, but I like the idea of this Commander Shepard that he's, for all intents and purposes, are just the guy, you know? His value is more in is like charisma and leadership and things like that kind of like steve rogers right and he will be surrounded by people who are more powerful than him in terms of tech and biotic kind of so yeah i'm gonna play as a soldier soldiers are combat specialists ideal for the front lines of a firefight soldiers have improved health can specialize in the use of all weapon types start with the ability to wear medium armor and can train in the use of heavy armor yeah let's go with soldier confirm facial identification uh, you know what i like the uh, i like this default look just fine i don't know if, if we can have a longer hair maybe let's try in the original game, the custom models look like potatoes, but let's see. Oh my god. 
<laughs> you know what? I'm not gonna bother with this. Let's go back, guys. I I doubt I can make anything even resembling the default model. Again, what I really wanted was just default model with longer hair, but I don't think we can do that. So I'm um, just gonna go back. Confirm facial identification. Hell nah. I go with the default one. He looks handsome enough. So let's go. Profile reconstruction complete. Okay, name John Shepard. Origin Earthborn. Reputation War Hero. Class Soldier. I like it. Let's begin our adventure. Once you confirm your character is complete, you will be unable to change any settings. Yep. Confirm. Identification confirmed. Oh, we fiddled with this before, so we know that it's good. Yeah, continue. Well, what about Shepard? Earthborn, but no record of his family. Doesn't have one. He was raised on the streets. Learned to look out for himself. Mm. He proved himself during the Blitz. Held off enemy forces on the ground until reinforcements arrived. He's the only reason Elysium is still standing. We can't question his courage. Humanity needs a hero. And Shepard's the best we've got. I'll make the call. In the year 2048, explorers on Mars discovered the remains of an ancient spacefaring civilization. In the decades that follow, these mysterious artifacts revealed startling new technologies, enabling travel to the furthest stars. The basis for this incredible technology was a force that controlled the very fabric of space and time. Mass Effect. I didn't make it in time. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> the Arcturus Prime relay is in range. Initiating transmission sequence. Commander. We are connected. Calculating transit mass and destination. The relay is hot. Acquiring approach vector. Station secure for transit. Thrusters, check. Navigation, check. Internal emissions sync engaged. All systems online. Drift, just under 1500k. 1500 is good. Your captain will be pleased. I hate that guy. Nihilus gave you a compliment. So you hate him. You remember to zip up your jumpsuit on the way out of the bathroom? That's good. I just jumped us halfway across the galaxy and hit a target the size of a pinhead. So that's incredible. Besides, specters are trouble. I don't like having them on board. Call me paranoid. You're paranoid. <laughs> the Council helped fund this project. They have a right to send someone to keep an eye on their investment. Yeah, that is the official story. But only an idiot believes the official story. Ah, uh, you know what? I kind of see his point. They don't send specters on shakedown runs. So there's more going on here than the captain's letting up. Joker, status report. Just cleared the mass relay, Captain. Stealth systems engaged. Everything looks solid. Good. Find a comm buoy and link us into the network. I want mission reports relayed back to Alliance Brass before we reach Eden Prime. Aye, aye, Captain. Better brace yourself, sir. I think Nihilus is headed your way. He's already here, Lieutenant. <laughs> Tell Commander Shepard to meet me in the comm room for a debriefing. You get that, Commander? 
Yep. I'm on my way. <laughs> Is it me or does the captain always sound a little pissed off? Only when he's talking to you, Joker. Oh, here we are. All right, the codex. Okay. Let's press options for now. Yeah, okay, okay. So, let's check these out. This... Okay, the squad screen lets you view your team's talents. Use directional buttons to select a talent or its rank. Press X to spend a talent point to gain a rank in the selected talent. As you gain levels, you will acquire talent points and unlock higher ranks. Okay, we have our main character here, John Shepard. We have a bunch of talents here and so your class defines these talents, right? And Shepard have some unique ones. I think like Charm and Intimidate, only he gets it. And for me, I always rank up the, like either Charm or Intimidate first because as we can see here, uh, Charm opens Charm options in conversation and it also decreases the cost of items in stores. I prioritize this talent mainly for the first one because I want to have all the options in conversation. You know, this is a Bioware RPG. That's kind of the appeal of these games for me. So yeah. Again, as we, as we can read there, charm options in conversations will be grayed out if you do not have a high enough skill rank. New skill ranks will unlock when you become a Spectre and as you earn Paragon points. And we have three points and we have three slots for charm. It's just perfect for me. And yeah, so that's charms for one, two, three. Go back and the journal is for your missions and assignments, yes. You are Lieutenant Commander Shepard, Executive Officer on the SSV Normandy. Speak to the captain, go speak to Captain Anderson in the calm room. No assignments as expected. And here's the thing, the codex. Again, this is a Bioware RPG, so the codex, the codex will be quite extensive. I think I plan on reading it. Maybe not everything though. Oh, we have primary and secondary. I remember the codex is voiced over for Mass Effect. You know what? I think. We're gonna try uh, reading the primary as we got them, and if we are interested in going over the secondary ones, I'll set up a special episode for that. And yeah, this is gonna take some time, but I think it's really important because in a Bioware, Bioware RPG like this, I think it really it really is worth going over these codex entries to get the full picture as full of a picture that we're gonna get throughout the story I think so yeah and I'm pretty sure it's voiced over so yeah let's go for the first entry about council races the three most politically important species in the galaxy Roughly 1,200 years ago, the Turians were invited to join the Citadel Council to fulfill the role of galactic peacekeepers. The Turians have the largest fleet in Citadel space, and they make up the single largest portion of the Council's military forces. As their territory and influence has spread, the Turians have come to rely on the Solarians for military intelligence and the Asari for diplomacy. Despite a somewhat colonial attitude towards the rest of the galaxy, the ruling hierarchy understands they would lose more than they would gain if the other two races were ever removed. Turians come from an autocratic society that values discipline and possesses a strong sense of personal and collective honor. There is lingering animosity between Turians and humans over the first contact war of 2157. 
which is known as the Relay 314 incident to the Turians. Officially, however, the two species are allies, and they enjoy civil, if cool, diplomatic relations. Mm. Yep, and as we can see from earlier, uh, Nihilus is a Turian, right? Okay. And uh, Humanity and the Systems Alliance. Alliance is the government and military of humanity beyond Sol. I th think, if I remember correctly, that's what they call the solar system in this game, uh, in this series. The Systems Alliance is an independent supranational government representing the interests of humanity as a whole. The Alliance is responsible for the governance and defense of all extrasolar colonies and stations. The Alliance grew out of the various national space programs as a matter of practicality. Sol's planets had been explored and exploited through piecemeal national efforts. The expense of colonizing entire new solar systems could not be met by any one country. With humans knowing that alien contact was inevitable, there was enough political will to jointly fund an international effort. Still, the Alliance was often disregarded by those on Earth until the first contact war. While the national governments dithered and bickered over who should lead the effort to liberate Shanxi, the Alliance fleet struck decisively. Post-war public approval gave the Alliance the credibility to establish its own parliament and become the galactic face of humanity. Okay, there you go. And yeah, I think <laughs> in the beginning of this game, we're going to spend quite a lot of time uh, listening to the codex, primary codex. But I think it's going to pay off, guys. And of course, as we proceed through the game, there will be less primary codexes, codices that we're going to get. So yeah, I think. It's a good approach, but let me know what you think. Let's talk to Joker here. The captain's waiting for you in the comm room, Commander. Mm hmm. And Caden. You probably don't want to keep the captain waiting. Yep. Okay. It's a job. I told you I just saw him. He marked Violet. He was on a mission. He's a Spectre. They're always on a mission. We're getting dragged, right along with him. Relax, Presley. You're gonna give yourself an ulcer. Hmm, what do we have here? Let's talk to Navigator Presley. Congratulations, Commander. Looks like we had a smooth run. You heading down to see the captain? Ah, and whenever we have a dialogue wheel like this, the ones on the right continue the conversation, so I always prefer to exhaust the options on the left first whenever possible so let's go with this one I heard you arguing sounds like you don't trust our Turian guest sorry commander just having a chat with Adams down in engineering I didn't mean to cause any trouble but you have to admit something's odd about this mission the whole crew feels it you think the Alliance brass is holding out on us if all we're supposed to do is test out the stealth system, why is Captain Anderson in charge? And then there's Nihilus. Spectres are elite operatives, top covert agents. Why send a Spectre, a Turian Spectre, on a shakedown run? It doesn't add up. We heard about Spectre in the squad window. <laughs> okay, let's investigate. What do you know about the stealth systems? I just know it masks our location from scans and sensors. Cutting edge technology. The Normandy's the only ship with this prototype drive. But why are we fully staffed? A skeleton crew would be cheaper, less chance of security leaks, too. Plus, there's Nihilus. It's pretty obvious this shakedown run is just a cover. We got like two people already feeling this way Joker and now Presley. For what? Damned if I know, Commander. We're out here on false pretenses. I'm not a fan of being left in the dark. I think there was another option before, right? Let's go over this one more time. What do you know about the stealth systems? 
I just know okay. it masks our location oh. from scans and sensors. I thought it was cutting edge forward. technology. The Normandy is the only action. ship with this prototype drive. But why are we fully staffed? A skeleton crew would be cheaper, less chance of security leaks, too. Plus, there's Nihilus. It's pretty obvious this shakedown run is just a cover. Yo, nope, never mind. <laughs> I'm not gonna go, like, saying he's wrong or anything. I don't know much about what's happening either. So let's investigate. Do you have a thing. problem with the captain? No, sir. But I can't figure out what he's doing here. Captain Anderson is one of the most decorated special forces officers in the service. If he melted down all his medals, he could make a life-size statue of himself. Wow. You don't send a soldier like that on a do-nothing mission. He's treating this shakedown run too seriously. Something big is going on. I mean, both Joker and Presley are making good points. You don't trust Nihilus. I don't like Turians in general. It runs in my family. My grandfather fought in the first contact war. Lost a lot of friends when the Turians hit us. Mm, see, we heard about the first contact war from the Codex. But yeah, that was a long that was long ago. I think. No, I mean I don't think Nihilus was in the war or anything. That was 30 years ago. You can't blame Nihilus for that. See? No, I guess not. But it still makes me nervous to have a Spectre on board. Especially a Turian. We're an Alliance vessel, human military, but Nihilus doesn't answer to the captain like the rest of us. Spectres operate outside the normal chain of command. Mm. And they don't come along just to observe shakedown runs. <laughs> Nihilus looks like he's expecting some heavy action. I don't like it. I think that's everything. And let's just say we'll look into it. So we are also curious. Well, I am at least. <laughs> I'll see if I can get some answers when I see him. Good luck, Commander. So that was Navigator Presley. What happens if you talk to him? Something I can do for you, Commander? I was curious about a few things. You and me both. Like I said before, too many things don't add up on this mission. Oh, no. It's just the same thing, it's okay. I better head down and see the captain. Yes, sir. Everyone is rocking. Like, every dude is rocking a short hair. It's not the kind of place Spectres visit. There's something Nihilus isn't telling us about this mission. That's crazy. The captain's in charge here. He wouldn't take orders from a Spectre. Not his choice, Doc. Spectres don't answer to anyone. They can do whatever they want. Kill anyone who gets in their way. Oh, you watch too many spy vids, Jenkins. Oh, by the way, I'm gonna play this game like this. I'm gonna try to listen to as much things as I can. Because, again, the lore, the story is kind of one of the most appealing aspects of the series for me. So, I hope that's what you're into as well. So now let's talk to Dr. Chakwas and Corporal Jenkins. I think it's where we're gonna talk with both, right? Yep. What do you think, Commander? We won't be staying on Eden Prime too long, will we? I'm itching for some real action. I sincerely hope you're kidding, Corporal. Your real action usually ends with me patching up crew members in the infirmary. Fair. Yeah, I'm gonna tell him to relax. You need to calm down, Corporal. A good soldier stays cool, even under fire. Sorry, Commander, but this waiting's killing me. I've never been on a mission like this before, not one with a Spectre on board. I think we really should do, like, the non-investigate left options first. In cases like this. Uh, you'll do fine. Just treat this like every other assignment you've had and everything will work out. Easy for you to say. You proved yourself in the Blitz. Everybody knows what you can do. This is my big chance. I need to show the brass what I can do. Careful. You're young, Corporal. You have a long career ahead of you. Don't do something stupid to mess it up. Don't worry, sir. I'm not going to screw this up. Yeah, he's a little bit too hot-headed, I think. We need to, you know, pull him down. Uh, so that's why I... 
chose the choices I did. What can you tell me about Nihilus? Turians are generally well respected by the other species. Their fleet has more patrols protecting Citadel space than any other. They don't always get on well with us, though. Some people find them too rigid. Others still blame them for the first contact war. As for Nihilus, I haven't said more than two words to him. He usually only speaks to the captain. Mm. I hope we get a chance to see him in action. I heard Nihilus took down an entire enemy platoon all by himself. Nihilus got a fan in Corporal Jenkins, apparently. What do you know about the Spectres? Only what I've heard. Spectre agents work directly for the Citadel Council. They usually work alone or in small groups. Spectres don't have any official power, though. Basically, they're a shadow organization with a mandate to preserve and protect galactic stability. Protect it at any cost. Don't forget that part. Spectres operate above the law. Why don't we have any of our own people in there? Spectres usually come from the council races, like the Turians. We've been trying to get a human accepted into their ranks for years now. So far, it hasn't happened. Hey, Commander, you'd make a good Spectre. You're a oh, war thanks. hero, right? Held off an entire enemy fleet during the Blitz single-handed? That's the kind of talent the Spectres are looking for. This is all just wild speculation. The Spectres aren't interested in recruiting humans, no matter how capable. How do you control agents with unlimited power? I suppose the Council could revoke the Spectre status of an agent who got out of hand. At that point, Citadel Security Services would take over. Those C-Sec grunts wouldn't stand a chance. The Spectres were 20 ordinary soldiers. 20. The Spectres police themselves. An agent goes rogue, they send another agent to take him down. That's Spectre justice. The Corporal's confusing romantic legends with reality, Commander. Hmm. You're from Eden Prime, aren't you, Jenkins? Oh. What's it like? It's very peaceful, Commander. They've been real careful with development, so you don't have any city noise or pollution. My parents lived on the outskirts of the colony. At night, I used to climb this big hill and stare across the fields back at the lights from the main settlement. It was gorgeous. But when I got older, I realized it was a little too calm and quiet for me. That's why I joined the Alliance. Even Paradise gets boring after a while. You know, I don't think I can relate to that. Like, if you're already in paradise, <laughs> why go out? Well, he said it gets boring, but it's paradise. <laughs> okay. Any idea why Eden Prime was chosen as our destination? Not really sure, Commander. Eden Prime is one of our most stable colonies. Good place to take the Normandy for a shakedown run, I guess. No real danger there. There's got to be something else going on. We've got a Spectre on board. That's why I'm so wound up. I can't wait for the real mission to start. Isn't he at least a little bit worried though? I mean, it's Jenkins' home, right? It's his own home, so... We got a Spectre and does that mean something dangerous is gonna happen? At his hometown? I'd be kind of, you know, worried as to what might happen to my hometown hey okay. that's all so yeah the captain's waiting for me goodbye commander Ooh. got paragon we got new codex entries let's check them out guys if they are primary I'm gonna listen to those oh yeah okay specters are agents from the office of special tactics and reconnaissance and answer only to the Citadel Council. They are elite military operatives, granted the authority to deal with threats to peace and stability in whatever way they deem necessary. They operate independently or in groups of two or three. Some are empathetic peacekeepers, resolving disputes through diplomacy. Others are cold-blooded assassins, ruthlessly dispatching problem individuals. All get the job done one way or another often operating outside the bounds of galactic law. The Spectres were founded after the Salarians joined the Council. For many years, they operated in secrecy as backroom problem solvers. Only after the Krogan rebellions did their activities become publicized. 
Assignment of a specter is less contentious than a military deployment, but makes it clear that the council is concerned about a situation. Hmm. Okay. Eyeless is the real deal. Humanity's first contact with an alien race occurred in 2157. At that time, the Alliance allowed survey fleets to activate any dormant mass relays discovered, a practice considered dangerous and irresponsible by Council-aligned races. When a Turian patrol discovered a human fleet attempting to activate a relay, they attacked. One human vessel survived, retreating to the colony of Shanxi. The Turians followed, quickly defeating the local forces. Shanxi was occupied, the first and to date only human world to be conquered by an alien species. The Turians believed the handful of ships they defeated represented the bulk of human defenses, so they were unprepared when the second fleet, under Admiral Castany Drescher, launched a strong counter-offensive, evicting them from Shanxi. The Turians mobilized for full-scale war, drawing the attention of the rest of the galaxy. The Council quickly intervened, forcing a truce. Fortunately for humanity, the first contact war was ended with a diplomatic solution. Hmm, I see. And I think in our conversation with Presley, we said this was 30 years ago, 2157. So our year is 2187 then? Okay. And I look kinda like Corporal Jenkins right now, by the way. <laughs> it's just the emblem is not the emblem of the Systems Alliance. Are there anyone else we can talk to? Locked. Ooh, what's that? Galaxy map? Did he can open it? Oh, we can. Only the commanding officer may specify a destination for Normandy, okay. Oh, here, also locked. Oh, and I'm also <laughs> gonna explore as much as I can. I hope it isn't too annoying. But yeah, let's go. Nihilus, let's talk. Commander Shepard, I was hoping you'd get here first. People give us a chance to talk. The captain said he'd meet me here. He's on his way. I'm interested in this world we're going to. Eden Prime. I've heard it's quite beautiful. Well, according to Jenkins, it's paradise, so beyond beautiful, I think. They say it's a paradise. Yes, a paradise. Serene, tranquil, safe. Eden Prime has become something of a symbol for your people, hasn't it? Proof that humanity can not only establish colonies across the galaxy, but also protect them. But how safe is it, really? Mm, what are you getting at? If you've got something to say, just say it. Your people are still newcomers, Shepard. The galaxy can be a very dangerous place. Is the Alliance truly ready for this? I think it's about time we told the Commander what's really going on. This mission is far more than a simple shakedown run. As predicted by Joker, Presley, and even Jenkins to a point. Oh yeah, we knew it. <laughs> I figured there was something you weren't telling us. We're making a covert pickup on Eden Prime. That's why we needed the stealth systems operational. Mm -hmm. There must be a reason you didn't tell me about this, sir. This comes down from the top, Commander. Information strictly on a need-to-know basis. A research team on Eden Prime unearthed some kind of beacon during an excavation. It was Prothean. Beacon. I thought the Protheans vanished 50,000 years ago. Their legacy still remains. The mass relays, the Citadel, our ship drives. It's all based on Prothean technology. This is Big Shepard. The last time humanity made a discovery like this, it jumped our technology forward 200 years. But Eden Prime doesn't have the facilities to handle something like this. We need to bring the beacon back to the Citadel for proper study. Obviously, this goes beyond mere human interests, Commander. This discovery could affect every species in Council space. 
50,000 years ago. I thought it was 5,000. 50,000 years ago. What happened 50,000 years ago? History is not my strong suit. Why didn't we keep the beacon for ourselves? You humans don't have the best reputation. Some species see you as selfish, too unpredictable, too independent, even dangerous. Ooh. Sharing that beacon will improve relations with the Council. Plus, we need their scientific expertise. They know more about the Protheans than we do. The beacon is not the only reason I'm here, Shepard. Nihilus wants to see you in action, Commander. He's here to evaluate you. Evaluate? What's going on, Captain? The Alliance has been pushing for this for a long time. Humanity wants a larger role in shaping interstellar policy. We want more say with the Citadel Council. The Spectres represent the Council's power and authority. If they accept a human into their ranks, it shows how far the Alliance has come. You held off an enemy assault during the Blitz single-handed. You showed not only courage, but also incredible skill. That's why I put your name forward as a candidate for the Spectres. Ooh. Well, again, because I checked out the squad window. <laughs> we kind of know already. So sorry for spoiling that for you guys. But yeah, it is interesting. I mean, Shepard is a badass as we can expect, but mechanically, we're level one. <laughs> we're already a war hero. So yeah, that's quite interesting. Why would a Turian want a human in the Spectres? Not all Turians resent humanity. Some of us see the potential of your species. We see what you have to offer to the rest of the galaxy and to the Spectres. We are an elite group. It's rare to find an individual with the skills we seek. I don't care that you're human, Shepard. I only care that you can do the job. Hmm. That's a good outlook. Very practical, especially for a man in Nihilus' position, I think. I assume this is good for the Alliance. Earth needs this, Shepard. We're counting on you. No pressure. I need to see your skills for myself, Commander. Eden Prime will be the first of several missions together. You'll be in charge of the ground team. Secure the beacon and get it onto the ship ASAP. Nihilus will accompany you to observe the mission. What do you know about the Protheans? Just what they taught us in school. They were a technologically advanced species that ruled the galaxy 50,000 years ago. Then they vanished. Nobody really knows how or why, though I've heard plenty of theories. But everyone agrees, galactic civilization wouldn't exist without them. Their citadel is the very heart of galactic society, and without their mass relays, interstellar travel would be impossible. We all owe the Protheans a great debt. Hmm. I'd like to know more about Eden Prime before we touch down. It's a peaceful farming world, but it represents something much bigger. Eden Prime is one of our oldest and most successful colonies. It proved we were ready to face the challenges of settling new worlds, to forge a place for humanity beyond Earth. It symbolizes humanity's growth and evolution as a spacefaring species. And after this, it will be known as the world where humans made a discovery of galactic importance. A very important colony for us humans. By the way, Captain Anderson's lips from the side kind of looked weird to me. I hope it's not a Mass Effect Andromeda situation over here, but so far I'm liking how the game looks. Why is this beacon so important? All advanced galactic civilization is based on Prothean technology, even yours. If we hadn't discovered those Prothean ruins buried on Mars, we'd still be stuck on Earth. That was just a small data cache. Who knows what we can learn from this beacon? What if it's a weapons archive? We can't let it fall into the wrong hands. Mm -hmm. Like who? The Attican Traverse isn't the most stable sector of Citadel space. There are plenty of raiders and criminal groups active in the region. They might figure a Prothean beacon is worth the risk of attacking an Alliant ship. Plus, Eden Prime is right on the border of the Terminus Systems. The Terminus Systems? Psychomantis. <laughs> if you like uh, to watch Donkey, you're gonna get that joke, I think. The Attic and Traverse is under Citadel protection. If the Terminus Systems attack, it's an act of war. 
Technically, yes. But some of the species in the Terminus might be willing to start a war over this. The last thing the Council wants is to get dragged into a major conflict with the Terminus systems. We have to keep this low key. Yeah, I mean, the joke is because we keep on asking questions, but that's what happens in the beginning of the game. So yeah, I kind of get this situation here. It's a very delicate situation because a data cache jumped our technology 200 years. A beacon, who knows, a thousand years? So there's a lot of interested parties, hence the secrecy. So yeah, I'm ready to go, I think. Just give the word, Captain. We should be getting close to Eden. Captain, we got a problem. What's wrong, Joker? Transmission from Eden Prime, sir. You better see this. Bring it up on screen. Get down! Going down. We are under attack, taking heavy casualties. I repeat, heavy casualties. We can't get evac. They came out of nowhere. We need. Everything cuts out after that. No calm traffic at all. Just goes dead. There's nothing. Reverse and hold the 38.5. Status report. 17 minutes out, Captain. No other Alliance ships in the area. Take us in, Joker. Fast and quiet. This mission just got a lot more complicated. Exactly. A small strike team can move quickly without drawing attention. It's our best chance to secure the beacon. Grab your gear and meet us in the cargo hold. Tell Alenko and Jenkins to suit up, Commander. You're going in. Looks like a giant hand. Engaging stealth systems. Somebody was doing some serious digging here, Captain. Your team's the muscle in this operation, Commander. Go in heavy and head straight for the dig site. What about survivors, Captain? Helping survivors is a secondary objective. Oh. The beacon's your top priority. Approaching drop point one. Nihilus, you coming with us? I move faster on my own. Okay. Nihilus will scout out ahead. He'll feed you status reports throughout the mission. Otherwise, I want radio silence. You know what, I like Nihilus. He looks cool, he is cool, seems very strong. We've got his back, Captain. The mission's yours now, Shepard. Good luck! We are approaching drop point two. We got more codex. Let me check it out first. Oh. Fifty thousand years ago, the Protheans were the only spacefaring species in the galaxy. They vanished in a swift galactic extinction. Only the legacy of their empire remains. They are believed to have built the mass relays and the citadel, which have allowed numerous species to explore and expand throughout the galaxy. Prothean ruins are found on worlds across the galaxy. While surprisingly intact for their age, functioning examples of Prothean paleotechnology are rare. Time and generations of looters have picked their dead cities and derelict stations clean. Hmm. Some believe the Protheans meddled in the evolution of younger races. The Hanar homeworld of Kaje, for example, shows clear evidence of former Prothean occupation. The presence of a former Prothean observation post on Mars has caused a rebirth of interventionary evolutionists among humans. These individuals believe the god myths of ancient civilizations are misremembered encounters with aliens. Mm, I see. 
Protheans, very big deal. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit about it, but I think I'm, I already spent a lot of time on the codex. But yeah, it's interesting that in the series, the... Uh, the kind of like the cause of technology technology le leaps in technology is remnants of previous civilization you know yeah so most of the time we think like technology goes one direction right like from past to the future but in this series, the past is actually more advanced than the current, than the present time, so, yeah. The Terminus systems are located on the far side of the Attican Traverse, beyond the space administered by the Citadel Council or claimed by the Human Systems Alliance. It is populated by a loose affiliation of minor species, United only in their refusal to acknowledge the political authority of the Council or adhere to the Citadel Conventions. Their independence comes at a price. The Terminus is fraught with conflict. War among the various species is common, as governments and dictators constantly rise and fall. The region is a haven for illegal activities, particularly piracy and the slave trade. At least once a year, a fleet from the Terminus invades the nearby Attican Traverse. These attacks are typically small raids against poorly defended colonies. Hmm. The council rarely retaliates, as sending patrols into the Terminus systems could unify the disparate species against their common foe, triggering a long and costly war. You see. So, yeah. Mm, Terminus systems. Sounds like the bad part of the galaxy according to people in council space that how what the term is yeah okay just like uh, what captain anderson told us okay Head to the dig site. Make your way to the excavation site where the beacon was unearthed. Squad. Uh, we have. Oh, Caden. Uh, so Sentinel is his class, I think, and I'm. I think I'm gonna. Oh, you know what? I think we should get these. Barrier, yeah, because currently we don't have barrier. It's like his skills, right? Yeah. Well, let's get barrier. Adds a biotic barrier to your shield that absorbs damage but cannot block attacks that bypass shields. And first aid. Oh, use medigel to all wounded squad members restoring their health. So he's kind of our our healer sentinel is the tech and biotic class right yeah this is biotic biotic just tech tech yeah okay i think i'm gonna prioritize getting new skills and otherwise i'm gonna max out the class talents i think oh that's a good approach how about jenkins Ah, right, so yeah, let's get Assault Rifles, uh, Overkill, let's kill, the Assault Rifles talent, allows long bursts of Assault Rifle fire without overheating, so it's good, and let's get Soldier, oh, he's a soldier just like us, and we kinda run out of points. <laughs> All for the charm talent, okay. And we check the codex. Uh you know what? We are nearing the one hour okay. Hostiles everywhere. Keep your guard up. Oh, 
sorry about that yeah we are nearing the one hour mark i think i'm gonna end this episode here i'm gonna save off camera i think and yeah i think i'm gonna proceed by creating um, about an hour episodes like the, the episodes will be about one hour each and so yeah this episode is more about uh, creating the character, listening to a bunch of lore, no action yet, sorry about that, but that will be most of the next episode I can imagine. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching, I hope uh, this has been enjoyable for you so far, and I'm looking forward to see you in the next episode of Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Bye!